Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So before beginning of the session, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our videos and you can also post your queries over here. So moving on to question number one, which says the interplay of two RBI regulations has led to new complexities in auditing the core investment companies. One of those regulations, that is one of those two regulations is Holding companies of large corporate entities are now categorized as deemed NBFCs, even if they do not indulge in the borrowing or lending. Identify the other, that is the other regulation out of these two uh, from the options given below. So the answer to this question is option A, that RBI in April 2021 announced some stricter regulations for the auditors of your commercial banks, of NBFCs, of housing finance companies and why these regulations were there, uh, it was uh, they were basically introduced to bring the greater transparency and raise the quality of audits. So they are talking about the interplay of two RBI regulations. Let us discuss about it a bit. If I talk about the RBI, it came up with some stricter rules which are posing the problems for auditors. So what RBI has done is that RBI has categorized the core investment companies as the NBFCs. So the core investment companies will be considered NBFC even if they are not involved in the business of borrowing or lending. So even if these investment companies are not borrowing a single penny nor they are lending then also RBI according to certain criteria will consider these companies to be the NBFCs. Now if they will be if they will become NBFCs then obviously they will be regulated by RBI the way RBI regulates these NBFCs. So these investment companies don't want to fall under the definition of deemed NBFC because if they will be falling under this category then they will be regulated by RBI so the legal restrictions will be imposed on them and these companies don't want so. So several Indian high net worth Indians who invest using the core investment companies they don't want to be considered as the NBFCs and thus they are looking to restructure their firm so that they don't fall under the ambit of NBFC. So we are talking about the core investment company ki RBI ne core investment companies ko NBFC ki category mein dal diya hai. Ye mana jayega ki wo core investment company NBFC hai and accordingly RBI will regulate it. But what are these core investment companies? So if I talk about the core uh, if I talk about the core investment companies CICs then these are the companies that have their assets as investment in shares for holding stake in group companies. So when uh, the uh, companies are investing in other group companies with an objective of buying the major stake, okay, you are buying the stocks, you are buying the bonds, the debentures or the assets of group companies, not with an objective to trade in those securities, rather with an objective to have a holding stake in those companies. Then such companies which acquire that stake are called core investment companies. So in the core business here to invest. So in these companies, the core business of these companies is to invest and buy a stake in the group companies. A group of companies may investment karti hai taki zada se zada stake acquire kar sake. So their objective is not to do the trading or to carry out financial activity but to buy a holding stake. Now their main business is the acquisition of the shares and the securities with certain conditions. So no, they buy not less than 90% of the assets. So if major assets they buy karte hai, in the form of investments in the equity shares, preference shares, bonds, debentures, debts or loans in the group companies. Now I am again and again talking about group companies. What are these group companies? Group companies are an arrangement that involve two or more entities related to each other. So when you are investing in two or more entities combined together 
and those two or more entities can be related to each other in different ways they can be a parent company and a subsidiary company they can be two companies or more companies coming together as a joint venture as a related party or the, those two companies are running under a common brand name so if two or more entities are related to each other unke combination combined entity mein jab आपकी कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनीज इन्वेस्ट करती हैं देन दो आर दी ग्रुप कंपनीज जिसमें वो बेसिकली इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं ग्रुप कंपनी इन सिंपल वर्ड इज एन अरेंजमेंट इन्वॉल्विंग टू और मोर एंटिटीज सो व्हेन योर कोर इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपनी इन्वेस्ट्स इन दिस दीज ग्रुप कंपनीज टू बाय अ मेजर स्टेक ओके देन we consider that they are deemed nbfcs so they will be deemed to be nbfcs and reg- will be regulated as nbfcs rbi has put certain conditions where a company will be considered as an nbfc so what are these conditions even if that nbfc is not into lending but it holds 90% of its assets in the form of equity and its asset size is 100 crore so asset size is it has a if the firm has a large asset size and it is buying 90% of the equity in some group companies then that company will be considered as an nbfc if i talk about different high net worth individuals they are investing through the companies and the net worth of those companies has obviously skyrocketed it is more than 100 crores that's why such high net and in- individuals who are investing in the investing through the core investment companies those core investment companies fall under the ambit of nbfc so they fear that if they will be regulated by rbi then there will be numerous legal complications so in order to avoid that they are trying to restructure their business so that they don't fall under the ambit of deemed nbfcs now if i talk about the uh, the question talks about the interplay of two rbi regulations so the two rbi regulations are first that the holding companies of large corporate entities will be considered deemed nbfc even if they do not indulge in borrowing or lending so uh, these core investment companies when are investing in the group companies they will be considered as a deemed nbfc even if they are not involved in borrowing or lending business then on 27th april rbi announced some stricter regulations for the auditors of commercial banks nbfcs and housing finance companies so if you visit the rbi website under the notification section in the month of april a notification came up where rbi provided certain regulations which will regulate your commercial banks your nbfcs and your housing finance companies and those regulations were related to the Uh, cap limits the cooling off period the non audit restrictions some tenure for the audits how the audit should be carried out and all these regulations were focusing on bringing more transparency and raising the quality of audits so these two rbi regulations uh, have posed problems because the companies don't want to be uh, under the ambit of nbfcs but if because of rbi regulations they will be under the ambit then they have to adhere to the norms which are there for nbfcs now there are new rules with respect to audit and these new rules are posing the problems for the companies uh, what's the problem new rules mandate the firms to audit only one group entity and resign from all other group entities or the group company so jo bhi aapka statutory auditor hoga the statutory auditor will be auditing only the holding company he won't be allowed to audit the other companies which are a part of that group company so the statutory auditor will not audit the subsidiary company okay subsidiary 1 2 3 or any other related company the the statutory auditor is only going to audit the holding company and not the other related companies and uh, this has posed problem for the auditors auditors fear that only auditing the holding company without uh, properly auditing or viewing the group companies will pose them to additional risks so what will be the problem if a new statutory auditor of these holding companies or your core investment companies is auditing them but not auditing the underlying entities then there will be difficulty because overall view of the organization those auditors will not be able to get this will not be a comfortable arrangement as there could be risks involved in giving an opinion without looking at the underlying entities that statutory auditor will not be looking at the other related companies so his opinion will not be proper agar aap puri group of companies jo ek dusre se related hai 
उनको ऑडिट नहीं कर रहे सिर्फ होल्डिंग कंपनी को ही ऑडिट कर पा रहे हो तो आपका ओपिनियन सही नहीं आएगा एंड मोर ओवर इफ यूर इफ फॉर वन पर्टिकुलर होल्डिंग कंपनी यू आर अपॉइंटिंग अटेटरी ऑडिटर एंड फॉर अदर कंपनीज हु आर अ पार्ट ऑफ द ग्रुप कंपनीज आर बेसिकली ऑडिटेड बाय सम अदर ऑडिटर देन ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी डुप्लीकेशन ऑफ एफर्ट्स एडिशनल कॉस्ट सब वो कंपनीज रिलेटेड हैं उन्हें एक ही ऑडिटर ऑडिट कर सकता है लेकिन अगर अलग अलग ऑडिटर्स उन्हें ऑडिट करेंगे ऑब्वियसली डुप्लीकेशन होगा सेम चीज़ दोबारा दोबारा ऑडिट होगी एडिशनल कॉस्ट आएंगी एफर्ट्स ज़्यादा लगेंगे सो दैट्स दी प्रॉब्लम फॉर दी ऑडिटर्स सो इफ वन पर्टिकुलर ऑडिटर इज जस्ट ऑडिटिंग होल्डिंग कंपनी एंड नॉट रिलेटेड एंटिटीज एंड देर विल बी डुप्लीकेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एफर्ट्स इन्वॉल्व द कॉस्ट इन्वॉल्व एंड द ऑडिटर हैज टू रिव्यू द वर्क डन बाय द ऑडिटर ऑफ सब्सिडरीज फॉर ऑल राउंड कवरेज अगर आपको ऑल राउंड कवरेज चाहिए ओवरऑल व्यू चाहिए प्रॉपर ऑडिट का तो आपके ऑडिटर को सारी सब्सिडरीज को भी ऑडिट करना चाहिए बट हेयर दे आर सेइंग दैट ओनली होल्डिंग कंपनी विल बी ऑडिटेड बाय द स्टैटरी ऑडिटर्स एंड अदर ऑडिटर्स विल ऑडिट दी सब्सिडरीज सो दैट इज गोइंग टू पोज प्रॉब्लम दीज आर द टू रेगुलेशन विच विच द क्वेश्चन टॉक्स अबाउट so if i move back to the question we have already answered it answer is option a moving on to question number 2 it says which of the following statements correctly states the current position of nbfcs and their asset quality after rbi's effort of version 2.0 of the resolution framework of for the borrowers so we'll come back to the question let's first understand the concept Now, if I talk about the NBFCs and the quality of their assets, the payment defaults have risen for the NBFCs. NBFCs have stopped the collection visits after losing agents to the COVID, and asks RBI to allow some loan restructuring digitally. So, what is happening? NBFCs have given some loans. Now, the time comes to recover the loans. They are not able to do so. In order to recover the loans, NBFCs. send their agents to the people who have borrowed from them now because of pandemic not only people are suffering but the agents of nbis are also suffering they are also people they are also facing the pandemic they are dying because of pandemic or they are uh, suffering from this very disease of covid so what they can do rbi has allowed the restructuring but that has also not been allowed digitally so even if you want to restructure loans provide some more time period change the interest rates or the time when you can pay back the emis you need for restructuring you need documentation for which you need customer approval so you have to visit the customers but because of pandemic you are not able to visit the customers so the payment defaults have risen even further due to the second wave of pandemic the non bank lenders have seen rise in the 50% rise in the customers who are missing payments in first 15 days pehle 15 din mein hi make kafi zyada 50% defaults hone lage hain and if the trend continues if they are not able to recover uh, or deal with the situation of the pandemic then it will push up their defaults even further most nbfcs have stopped the door to door collection of the payments because they of the corona virus so if i talk about it a bit further rbi recently came up with a resolution framework in one of the sessions where i discussed about what actions rbi has taken amid the second wave of covid this was one of the slide where i discussed this framework that rbi is helping out the stressed assets of the individuals of small business of msmes where rbi is allowing the restructuring okay restructuring of loans is basically allowed or more time period is provided uh in the form of moratorium so all those steps have been taken up by rbi but for the resolution part even if they uh, rbi has allowed recasting of small loans but for recasting the customer approval is needed agar aapko recast karna hai aapko customer ke paas ja ke analyze karna padega ki kya wo pandemic se suffer kar rahe hain kya unki situation proper nahi hai अकॉर्डिंगली uh, डॉक्यूमेंट्स बनते हैं अप्रूवल होता है फिर रिकास्टिंग होगी सो इफ आर बी आई नीड टू विजिट द कस्टमर्स मेक श्योर दैट दे हैव सफर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ द पैंडमिक बिकॉज ऑफ विच दे आर नॉट एबल टू मेक द रीपेमेंट्स एंड अकॉर्डिंगली आफ्टर द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन दिस रीस्ट्रक्चरिंग कैन हैपन एंड फॉर दैट डॉक्यूमेंटेशन दे इज नीड टू विजिट दैट दी कस्टमर डोर स्टेप्स नीड टू विजिट द कस्टमर्स अप्रोच द कस्टमर्स इधर एन बी एफ सी एजेंट्स नीड टू गो टू द कस्टमर्स और कस्टमर्स नीड टू कम टू एन बी एफ सीज 
बट बोथ ऑफ बोथ ऑफ दीज थिंग्स आर नॉट पॉसिबल बिकॉज मेनी पीपल आर सफरिंग बिकॉज ऑफ दी कोविड सो दिस दीज रेगुलेशन आर नॉट हेल्पिंग टू दैट एक्सटेंड बट दे कैन हेल्प इफ द थिंग्स बिकम डिजिटल so the situation is far worse than what it was last year nearly dozens of agents of nbfcs have died or they are suffering because of pandemic over a span of month npas have almost doubled and by june we expect them to rise even more by 50% so in may further rise defaults mein hame expected hai almost also most non bank lenders have seen a dip by 5 to 10 percent between april if i give you some examples of nbfcs and then chola mandalam finance equitas sfb they all have seen a dip in the recovery of the payments and moreover the checks which have come up they have bounced because the businesses of people are not working well and people have to spend most of their earnings on their treatment so although rbi is helping out to restructure but they can't the nbfcs are not willing to risk the life of their staff and go for the recast related documentation by visiting the customers obviously people's balance sheet is more important than the financial balance sheets nbfc ke conditions uh, nbfc ki balance sheet mein agar zyada npas aa jayenge then that is not a problem lekin agar unke agency kaam karne ke liye nahi bachenge if their agents will not be alive then who will run the nbfc so obviously people's life lives are more important and thus nbs fc is given the priority to saving the life of people first and later think about the recasting but rbi can come up with a solution to this obviously rbi is going digital on different things we discussed about the kyc procedure where video based customer identification process rbi has come up with so why not bring it for the recasting as well if the documentation related to this recasting can be done digitally and using the video email sms whatsapp then that can be a great solution moreover rbi can relax the documentation with respect to restructuring these two are the options available which rbi can prefer to go for now talking about the asset quality nbfcs managed to survive the first wave of covid but second wave is again posing problems there are lockdown suspension of business and the recovery of loans is not easily possible so if i talk about the sectors to which nbfcs lend lend the one sector which has suffered a lot which is not seeing a credit growth is the industrial sector and in industrial sector also particularly the micro small and large industries are facing problems but there are certain sectors which whose credit flows have increased or have done well if i talk about the loan sector then the vehicle loans the gold loans the transport loans they have uh, increased to certain extent and have performed well but the industrial sector has not performed well despite of all these disruptions the nbfc still continue to disperse credit nbfcs in pandemic ke bawajood zyada se zyada credit disperse kar rahe hain and now it depends on how they cope up with the second wave of covid so gradually we'll come to know their asset quality okay so this was about the nbfc's asset quality if i move back to the question we have to identify the correct statements the first one says due to second wave of pandemic non bank lenders have seen rise in the missing payments in first 15 days pushing up order defaults this is correct second one says although rbi is helping out by providing an option to restructure loans nbfcs can't risk their staff and tell them to do the recast related documentation this is again correct the third one says among the sectors that nbfcs lends to industrial sector particularly micro small large enterprises was least hit no it was worst hit so this statement is wrong only first and second are correct answer is option c moving on to question number 3 it says wholesale price index based inflation rose to 10.49% in april compared to 7.39% in preceding month of march so march mein wpi eight year high pe thi we discussed about this in one of the sessions that in march the wpi reached the eight year high now it has reached the 11 year high limit and uh, wpi climbing to this 11 year high of 10.49% is a major upside surprise and it's first time that wpi has been in double digits in almost a decade 
which of the following factors have not impacted rising WPI? So WPI is rising. Now we have to identify the factors contributing to this. In one of the sessions, I discussed in detail about WPI, what is WPI, how it differs from the retail inflation that is CPI. So you can uh, go to that session and have a look at the differences between WPI and CPI. There is no point discussing the concepts again. We have already covered it in one of the recent sessions. So inflation uh, has now after that March maximum eight year high increased further to the 11 year high limit of 10.49 percent so let us look at some reasons why this inflation has risen so one of the reasons is the rising prices of basic metals basic metals ke prices kaafi bad gaye hain jiski wajah se inflation ho rahi hai secondly perishable food products led inflation so there has been a rise in the prices of the perishable food products our basic fruits vegetables their prices have risen because of which we are seeing a rise in WPI. Uh, around 4.9% rise was there in April with respect to primary food articles. Then another factor which is contributing to high WPI is the rising prices of your fuel, oil and of the manufactured items. So although this food inflation with respect to fruits, vegetables increased 4.9%, Inflation with respect to fuel rose by around 20 point some percent and with respect to manufacturing items around 9 percent. This is another reason of contributing which contributes to high WPI. Then we have the low base effect that is if we compare this year's WPI with that of the previous year's WPI in for the month of April then previous year there was a downfall or a contraction in WPI. In the last year, April, there was a 1.7% downfall or con contraction in the WPI. Mein. And this time, there has been 10.49% rise. So the base effect, because earlier it was too low and if it, we are comparing this year's WPI with previous year, obviously, the things will feel more zoomed out because there was a low base in the previous year. So these are some reasons which contribute to your rising WPI. The perishable fruit products, food products, especially your fruits, vegetables, then your minerals and basic metals have driven this surge in April. And we may it may lead to further rise in the CPI. If I talk about the retail inflation, the CPI, in the month of April, it was quite low, three-month low, 4.29%. But we can't expect that the CPI will continue to be low in the coming time period as well. WPI agar rise ho if your WPI is rising up, Obviously, it, it is the wholesale level price. So, ultimately, the uh, effects will reap on to your retail prices as well. If your wholesale level pe price is increasing, then the ultimate effect jo hai, wo retail prices pe aa hi So, we can't expect that CPI will continue to be low. Uh, the upward pressure in the input costs, because WPI is rising, that means input ki cost rise. Ho if input cost rise, obviously, your output cost will also rise so this rising input cost and then the because of the covid there are disruptions with respect to supply all these factors can further lead to a rising cpi as well if i talk about the rbi rbi obviously targets your cpi your retail inflation but they can't ignore wpi wpi itna zyada bad gaya hai to wo usko ignore nahi kar sakte it's too high for banks to ignore because ultimately it will have an effect on cpi and rbi will have to take the actions now if i talk about a sector with where the wpi has not risen that much then it includes your prices of cereals wheat onion paddy pulses the uh, the inflation with respect to these have fallen is ki inflation nahi badi hai kam hui hai what's the reason the reason is that the government is keeping buffers buffer stock okay so government is having the buffer of these products that is helping to maintain the prices and make sure that the wpi with respect to these doesn't rise so in sub factors se wpi rise nahi hua hai ki in sab ki wajah se thoda sa kam raha hai if these uh, if the inflation with respect to these products would also have risen then this 10.49 percent would have been even higher so moving back to the question we had to identify the factors which have not impacted not what is important rising price of basic metals have not impacted no they have impacted so this is not the option rising prices of perishable food products they have also impacted so ye answer nahi ho sakta this can't be the answer rising prices of fuel oil they have impacted so this cannot be the answer 
देन द राइजिंग होलसेल इन्फ्लेशन इन पैडी वीट और या नो इसकी वजह से तो डब्ल्यू पी आई कम हुआ है इट्स नॉट अ फैक्टर विच हैज इम्पैक्टेड राइजिंग डब्ल्यू पी आई सो आंसर इज ओनली फोर ऑप्शन बी मूविंग ऑन टू लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द डे द यू एस हैज बीन पुशिंग फॉर ग्लोबल यूनिटी टू स्टॉप एम एन सीज फ्रॉम एक्सप्लॉडिंग दी टैक्स गैप्स अक्रॉस दी वर्ल्ड द बिडेन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन हैज फ्लोटेड अ कॉम्प्रोमाइज प्रपोजल टू काउंटर पार्ट अराउंड द वर्ल्ड that would apply a new international tax code which of the following statements correctly mentions the objectives that the global tax could serve so what they are talk- talking about recently it was quite prominently in news that the us the bidens administration is recommending a proposal a deal for having a global tax a global tax deal uh, the us wants that minimum of 21% tax should be imposed now today's world is more of a globalized world the businesses are going international the firms are going international there are different mnc's operating worldwide so what do these mnc's do they usually set up their establishments in those countries where the tax rates are low so that they can take the advantage of paying low taxes but if they are paying low taxes obviously it is reducing the opportunity for governments to earn more tax revenue so us wanted to have a minimum of 21% tax but if this 21% tax will be implemented only in us agar sirf us hi 21% ka minimum tax impose karega then obviously the companies will run to other countries where the tax rates are low because us doesn't want this it is recommending to have a global minimum tax ki baki countries bhi ye tax ki jo deal hai isko opt kare uh, us wants that the other countries also opt for this so that there is no room left for companies shifting from us to other countries now how can this deal help now because of the covid the governments of different nations have to spend a lot on their nations to help it recover so deficits governments ke bad gaye hain governments deficits have increased so if this global minimum tax will be imposed okay the companies which say suppose uh, suppose is a us company which is operating through some other country say india suppose they are paying 15% tax in india and in us if 21% gets imposed then if a company is not paying minimum 21% in other country it will have to pay that much amount in us agar koi company hai jo us ki company hai wo suppose india mein 15% tax pay kar rahi hai to agar ye global tax impose ho jayega to baki ka jo differential 6% hai jiska fayda company ko mil raha tha ab nahi mil payega us company ko us mein 6% tax dena padega इससे क्या होगा यूएस का सिक्स परसेंट टैक्स रेवेन्यू बढ़ जाएगा द कंपनीज विच इन ऑर्डर टू एवेड द सिक्स परसेंट डिफरेंशियल टैक्स बाय सेटिंग अप देयर यूनिट्स इन इंडिया विल नाउ बी लाइबल टू पे दिस सिक्स परसेंट इन यूएस सो इट विल इंक्रीज द टैक्स रेवेन्यू ऑफ यूएस बाय सिक्स परसेंट सो सिमिलरली डिफरेंट कंट्रीज ऑप्ट फॉर दिस देन द कंपनीज विच बिलोंग टू दोज कंट्रीज विच आर ट्राइंग टू इवेड दिस मच टैक्स बाय शिफ्टिंग टू अदर कंट्रीज वॉन्ट बी एबल टू डू सो so if there is an indian company which is shifting to some other nation to evade tax or if there is a us company which is shifting to evade tax then they won't be able to do so and the differential tax they have to pay in their respective nations this will boost the revenues for the government okay especially bidain administration has done this because they want this increased tax revenue now secondly it is true that the uneven rates have led in mncs to disguise their profit and go for jurisdiction shopping you would have heard the terms term tax havens okay we have a diff- mauritius singapore Brit- british virgin islands and many other Ir- ireland bahamas and etc type of countries where either the tax rates are very low or almost negligible this is the reason why companies set up their subsidiaries over there shift their profits so that they don't have to pay the taxes this is the concept of tax havens so if this global minimum tax will be imposed then the companies which are taking the benefit of tax havens and trying to shift their profit to avoid the taxes won't be able to do so so ye profit shifting ki or tax avoidance ki problem jo hai isse solve ho sakti hai 
and it is not that some companies are doing though even the major companies like major digital giants like apple alphabet facebook nike starbucks all of these have tried to set up their subsidiaries to hoover the profits to some low tax countries so if you are a uh, say american company and you don't want to pay major taxes in america you can set up a subsidiary in one of these tax haven and you can show that you are earning profit over there you are earning income over there so if your income is earned over there you will be taxed according to their provisions so this way companies try to evade the taxes but if this global tax deal will come into picture then they won't be able to evade this taxes this way this these are the purposes which this deal can serve but obviously it will pose some problems for the nations Na- why will nations suffer if i talk about india in special economic zones or in in different areas in order to encourage more M- nbf more mncs to set up their businesses government wo- offers them low tax benefits okay some tax exemptions now if this deal will be opted by india then those relaxation those relaxations couldn't be given so it will not attract those mncs to your country okay then uh, the there are com- countries like these tax havens they will also suffer because they will not attract the companies if suppose there is a us company if it is not paying any tax because it's in a tax haven uh, in fa- despite of that they will have to pay 25% 21% in us then there will be no benefit left or no incentive of this company going to a tax haven so it will not go to tax haven one jab 21% tax dena hi hai chahe wo tax haven mein operate kare chahe wo us se operate kare to wo us se hi karengi while they why they will take the pain and go to a tax haven to operate so tax havens will not attract more mncs in that case so they will suffer a lot uh, then a global minimum tax rate would essentially take away the tool that country used to push policies that suit them so the benefit you which you had with respect to using your tax policy to suit you to attract more investments you won't be able to use that tool आपके पास जो सॉवरन टूल था कि आप अपनी टैक्स पॉलिसी अपने फायदे के हिसाब से यूज कर सकते हो यू वॉन्ट बी एबल टू डू दैट सेटिंग अप स्पेशल जोन टू अट्रैक्ट मोर फॉर्म्स बाई ऑफरिंग लो टैक्स विल नो लॉन्गर बी हेल्पफुल देन यू एस इंटरेस्ट लूम लार्ज एंड टैक्स हेवन स्टैंड टू लूज सो स्टैंड जो टैक्स हेवन है देर विल लूज बिकॉज ऑफ इट बिकॉज ऑफ विच दिस डील इज सफरिंग दिस डील इज बेसिकली फेसिंग अ रेजिस्टेंस फ्रॉम सच काइंड ऑफ कंट्रीज okay it will take the sovereign right with respect to the tax policy which they could have used to lure more mncs to come to their nations lastly the tax floor prescribed is quite high a 21% ka minimum tax rate is very high the minimum uh, prescribed rate is quite high and in a long run it can negatively impact the businesses so this was all about the global tax deal until now nothing has been finalized so let's see which countries opt for this deal and which don't so we have to identify the statements which correctly mentions the objectives this deal could serve firstly it can bridge the government deficit by raising tax revenues yes it can help break the mold of tax avoidance and profit shifting yes it can help essentially provide a tool a sovereign right that countries could use to push tax policies no it will not provide a tool it will take away the tool which the companies have so which the countries have so the first and second statement are correct answer is option c this was all for today's session i hope you found it to be useful with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much